I've gone by a lot of different titles. I'm just not comfortable sharing them with you right now. <laughs> Alright people, let's make some titles. You see I already have a video clip down in the timeline. When you want to add a title, you have to make sure that you are selecting a video track that is above all of the other clips so that the title can be seen. So I'm going to select track one by left clicking on it. And you can tell that this track is selected because the track is lighter than the other tracks. Then I'm going to make sure that my playhead is in a position that is where I want the title to show up or start being visible. You can always change this later by dragging or trimming the title however you want to. Once you got your playhead where you want, you can either hit control five or you can hit the title button here. If you hit the title button, it will create a title above or it will create a title on the track that you select and it'll open up the title editor. Let's talk about the interface real quick. On the left hand side, we have the library or the media window that you have open. This information will be useful uh, later on in the tutorial. In the center, you have your preview window. It shows the text as well as any tracks that were below it when you open up the title editor. Above that, you have your looks and your motions, which we'll get into in a second. And all the way down to the bottom, you have your layers as well as your uh, timeline. So you can add multiple layers of text, shapes, um, all types of stuff in here. And I'm going to get into that in a moment. And then over to the right, you have your text settings. So let's start off with the text settings. So text settings are pretty simple. This box here you can utilize to type your text into. You can also place your cursor in the text that's in the preview window and you can type your text there. You can delete text. You can do everything from the preview window as well. Underneath your text settings, you got your bold, italics and underline. And then to the right of that, you have your uh, align left, align center, align right, and you have justify. And then to the right of that, you have your text flow. So your text flow, you can basically change that to go in all types of different directions, depending on how you want the text to go across the screen. You can change it up in several different ways. And it base, it's based on what you want to do with your text. Below that, you have your look settings. Basically, if you choose any preset text or any text that you saved, then that will show up here. Right now it's set on default because we did not choose any preset. And to the right of that, you have a save button. You can save and name any text that you create. So if you create some type of text that you want to use over and over again, hit this save button and it'll save it under the My Look section that is above in the middle of the screen. Now, these buttons are pretty much important for creating your own text. You got your face button. So the face button is the main text, really the, the center of it. Right now I have it set to white. If I change this, I can click on white. You can change the color to any color here. I can utilize the, my RGB settings to change it. I can use my eyedropper tool to change the color. I can change the uh, uh, opacity, all types of stuff. So if I click on apply, it'll change it to red. I also have a choice to do gradient. If I want to do a gradient color, I can. I click on apply and it'll do a gradient. And I have it going from left to right. As you can see here, the blue to white. So the left of the text off, off blue and the rest starts to get lighter as I go. So I can go back to just my regular color here. And let's see. Let's go back and change it back to white. 
right? So that's your fill or your face. Next over here, you have your outline. So if you want to add an outline, you can do so. And if I click on apply, I got my outline now. I can change my outline. I can change the uh, setting, how far it's offset on the X and the Y axis. You can change the size of it, make it bigger, smaller. I can add a blur to it. I wish to do so. And then I could change the all pass the opacity of it. And of course I could change the color like I did before. All types of good stuff there. I like it a lot. And then besides the face and the edge, you also have your shadow. If I want to add a shadow to this, I can do so. Can add whatever color I want. I got all the same settings, change the offset, size, blur, opacity, change the color, all of that goodness. Now, you can get rid of each one of these by just clicking on the trash bin and it'll take it away. Now, the background settings on this, you can actually use any video clip that you want as a background. If you don't want to use like the background that's in the timeline, um, if you want to add your own background, you can do so. If you do that, um, you should still have it above the other tracks or at least at the top track where the other video clips are. So when I talked about the library or the media window being open and being helpful to you later, this is what I was referring to. I could go here and I can drag any one of these clips from here into this background drop zone. And now that's the background instead of the background that I had in the timeline. You can change the opacity of it. Uh, if it didn't fully fit in the screen, I could change it from keep aspect ratio to stretch to make it fit the whole screen, but the aspect ratio is the same in the clip, so it doesn't matter. And if I decide I don't like that, I can just click the trash bin and it'll take it away. You also got your stereoscopic settings. So if you're doing 3D, this is where to turn on your 3D text depth and knock out some uh, 3D text if you want to do so. Now let's talk about the settings down here. Over here to the left, you got to add a new text layer. So these are your layers here. If I hit add text layer, you'll see it adds a new layer of text and I can type something new if I want to. Uh, doesn't matter. All right. And now I got two different text layers. So I have to make sure that I'm working in the editor to select the text layer that I want when I do that, because if not, I'll be changing the other text layer. And it also tells you what you typed in down here. So it's easy to distinguish which layer you're working with. So if I'm on my text there, I notice that that's a little off. Well, you got your alignment, your group align tool. So you can align multiple layers together. You can align a layer all by itself. Do however you want to right now. I only have one layer selected, so I just moved it there. But let's say I wanted to align multiple ones. I can just left click here and lasso both of them. And now they're both selected. And now I have these options up here as well, where I can uh, align them all to the right and put them all together. Now they're all basically set the same. And if I want to do horizontal center, can move them both to the center, vertical center. Now they're both sitting on top of each other. Don't like that too much. So I'm going to backspace this step back. And now I got them both basically centered horizontally. So that looks good. That way you can get all your text lined up how you want to. All right, if you got multiple layers of text. So here we have our order. So if I did want to have like something else added in here, like a shape or something like that, I could make sure that my text is lined up the way I want to. So let's say I added a shape. We have our shape button here. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to choose to add a circle. 
So now my circle's on top of your text here and my text there. Let's say I wanted to have my text there on top of the circle. Well, I just need to click on the my text there track. Go to the button here and do bring forward. And now my text there is on top. Can't really tell too much because it's all white. But if I were to, let's say I change the color of this bad boy. To something different. Then you can see that my text there is actually on top. And the other ones on the bottom. Now if you don't want to use this button to move stuff around, all you got to do is. Easy as pie. All right. Now, let's get rid of the shape here. Now, you can get rid of any one of these by either clicking on it and hitting your delete key. Or you can click on it down here in your track. Right click it and do delete layer and it'll remove it as well. There's several different ways to remove the text. Now, Question I always get is I'm trying to, you know, size up my text and I can't. So if I were to drag this right now, all you see is a text box move. Text isn't getting sized up. People are used to dragging this and making your text bigger or smaller. Well, you can still do that. This basically is for like if you have a lot of text in the box and you're trying to get, you know, the setting or the size that you want, it'll actually move with it. But if you're just trying to get the text to be bigger or smaller, by clicking on the drag points or the grab points, then you got to come down here to the wrap text button. Right now it's orange. If I click on it and change it to white, now I will size up the text. If I click on any of these drag or grab points and drag it out. So if you wanted to know how to do that, that's how you do it, pal. All right, so now we got looks. And motion so for looks if you're on the looks tab and you go to standard or shadow or beveled or whatever it'll show you the different presets all you really got to do is hover your mouse over it and it'll give you the different look without you having to select it if you like it go ahead and select it you also got shadow a bunch of different shadow ones in here you got beveled different beveled looks and you got outlined there's also my looks. So if you have saved any uh, text settings that you like, it will be under my looks. All you have to do to save one is if you go through and you make all the changes to everything you like, give it a name here and click on save, look. And then when you go to my looks, it'll be under here as well, under my looks section. All right. So if there's text that you like to use over and over, that's a good thing to do. Then you got motions. So you got your entrance or enter. So this tells how the text is gonna enter the screen. There's a lot of different options on here. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but if you hover your cursor over them, it gives you a preview of it. You also got uh, emphasis, which is usually the thing that's gonna be happening the whole time, or it's gonna happen in the middle of the text. And then you have exit. So basically, it says how the text is going to leave the screen or exit the screen. And the good thing about this is like in Pinnacle Studio 18 Ultimate, if I chose page from behind for my entrance, I can have my text leave the same way. If I go to exit and I choose page two behind, it'll go right back the way it came in. So it's basically a complimentary exit to every entrance that you have on here. All right, any type of entrance or let's say we added them in here. If we add page from behind as the entrance and then we go to exit and we add page two behind, you'll see now down here in my layer that I actually have the entrance and the exit motion. I can make it go longer by clicking on the little grab point and dragging it out or shorter by making it smaller. And if I decide that I want to change the entrance or exit motion, I can just click on this little X here and it'll delete 
the motion from the track. And when you're done, all you got to do is hit OK. You know I got my own YouTube channel, Pinnacle Studio Pro. Check it out on YouTube. Got all type of great videos out there for you, whether it be for text, advanced editing, basic editing, special effects, all types of good, good loveliness that will help you make better videos with Pinnacle Studio. I also got a Facebook page. You should check it out. Google Plus page. Hmm. You might want to give that a look, people. Twitter, I'm there too, all right? As a matter of fact, just look me up all over the world. Hit me up online. You can hit your boy Malik up with questions. I will get back with you and I will help you. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see you again soon.